So let's get tar started talking about support and resistance, which is a very important concept to understand in the financial markets. Support and resistance is one of the most widely used concepts in Forex and CFD trading. Strangely enough, not everyone seems to have their own idea on how you should measure support and resistance. The concept of support and resistance forms the basis of technical analysis. Traders look to buy at or near areas of significant levels of potential support in an uptrend, where traders look to sell at or near areas of, of resistance in a downtrend. So you can think of support and resistance as the floor below your feet and the ceiling above your head. So if you just imagine an elevator and imagine your support is that floor holding you up and in order to move to the next level, you have to break through that ceiling. So it's your resistance. When you move to that next level, that old ceiling becomes your feet, the support under your feet and you have a new resistance level above your head. When the elevator is coming down, just the exact reverse holds true. So you may have heard the old business cliche, buy low and sell high. Traders usually ask the question, how low is low and how high is high? One way we can qualify these levels is using areas where prices stopped and changed direction in the past or prices gotten stuck. The area where price stops after moving up and then turns around is called resistance. Resistance acts as a ceiling capping the future advance. Now there's no rule that price can't go right through a resistance area. And you have minor resistance and major resistance. But most of the time, price will congest around that area. In other words, once you've defined and found an area of resistance, price will move up to it now it can bounce off. It can be rejected and that could serve as stop that upward movement, or it could go this way, bounce back, bounce back, bounce back, and then sail right through. And sometimes it just goes right through. Okay. There is no law, but knowing where there's resistance is, okay, helps you predict what you might expect to happen. In most cases, if price is moving up, it will approach this level of resistance and it will get resisted. It'll hem and haw because the buyers and sellers have to make a determination of what they decide is gonna happen here. And then it'll go through. Okay. It's, not an, it's not a steel fence, it's not an iron wall. It's just a place where the, the ground gets muddy for a second. And the same holds true for support. Now support is what holds up the price and resistance what keeps it down. So again, if you imagine this is the elevator and you're here in the elevator, this is the floor below your feet. When you wanna move up in that elevator, you have to break through that ceiling. When you do, that ceiling so when you're trying to break through, it's resisting you. You have to break through it. When you get above it, it becomes your new floor or your new support level. And then you have a new resistance level up here. And we can plot what we call minor or majors, and we can have two or three or four levels above of these important levels. So as price moves, these are the important stepping stones in a price movement. <clears throat> now, resistance is not just some random area where price turns around. There are potential sellers, traders who have sold a currency pair or an asset once before, and remember the collective power that had to push the price lower. There are also buyers who went long. So imagine as price, now remember, price does not move like this. Price moves and push and ease, push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. This gives us a beautifully defined uptrend or downtrend. Now, when we have sideways movement, that's a whole different scenario. But when price is moving up or down, 
So what happens is, for some reason, buyers start buying at a particular price. More and more buyers enter the market and the price starts to rise. They push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. And they keep buying, buying, buying. New buyers are jumping in. At some point, some of the buyers that were entering the market decide to go sit on the sidelines. They don't decide that it's not going to keep going up. They decide this is a little bit too high of a price for me to buy at. That's it. So they sit on the sideline. So that lessens the demand. Now, other traders who entered here had already decided to sell at this point or at this point. So they're taking their profit because they made nice profit here. And as they close their trades and these sellers move to the sideline, the price starts to ease back down. It eases back down to create the support level. At this level, these buyers who move to the sidelines start saying, ah, this is an interesting price. We're going to go back in the market and start buying. And they start buying. And at some point, all of these sellers had been cleared out of the market and the price starts moving up. And the same thing happens over and over and over again. Now, so I mentioned you have these different groups of buyers, buyers who lost, buyers who have set price to get out because these moves in an uptrend is con price is constantly making higher highs and higher lows. And what you're looking at on your screen is a beautifully well-defined uptrend. Now, you say, how do I know wh what these prices are? Well, one thing to remember is that support and resistance are not exact numbers. We say them as numbers, but they're actually areas or levels because there's not a finite number that's going to tell us, okay? So we can we build what we call support and resistance areas or zones. Now, they, we can get these in many ways. Now, there are three general ways we can define or get support and resistance. My favorite is called eyeballing. Eyeballing, is to me one of the best methods because it forces you to look at price and price charts and understand what is happening in the markets. So let me pop up a price chart for you. Okay, now this is my teaching chart. It's the Euro US dollar. And right now I have it set on a three hour chart. Now you see all these red lines? Those red lines are levels of support and resistance that I defined months ago <clears throat> because when the only ones that are important to us at the moment are the ones around where price is currently trading. But when we look back at historical charts, we can see where in the past price has had a problem moving up or supporting. So here, way back here, we see that price got congested here. We see way back here, price got stuck right here. We can go back farther. And as you see, a lot of these levels have been drawn forward for months and months now. They're not things that I created based on today's pricing. And once you put them on your chart, they're good forever, but they're only valuable when price is trading in that range. So right now we can see these were brought forward months ago, and they, they run into the future. These are levels that I looked at on my charts, and you can go back six months, you can go back a year, or whenever the price was trading at about what it is now in the past. Because the only things you're concerned with are, like I said, around this price. When price moves up higher or down lower, you're going to have to define those levels. Now, if you look, I defined these levels quite some time ago. I'm sorry, and I pulled this one all the way up top by mistake as we were talking. Okay. Now, as you can see, these price levels were dragged here from way in the past. And look what happened. As the euro is bouncing off its low here at 109.885, 
look at how it reacted to this support line that was drawn from way in the past. It came down and touched it and bounced off of it and couldn't get through it because that support line held. So that line, we already knew. So when price was approaching the 109.885, all of us traders were looking to see what happened at that level. As price moved all the way up to here, look at what happened when price reached this resistance level. It peaked. It also tried here and it broke. Look at this, what price happened here on all of these levels were brought forward, like I said, from months ago. Now, we see how important this level is here and here. Now, price bounced off of its support level here. And where did it move to? It moved up to its old resistance level. And then look at that, it fell back to its previous support level. That tells us or helps us make decisions about price. It helps us understand and interpret price action. Now, the method of doing this, like I said, is called eyeballing. Now, again, these are not, even though they're drawn on numbers, you, we didn't go back and say, ah, at 109.885.472, that's the level, because we don't care. We know around 109.88, that's an important level. And so we have it logged into our system to keep an eye on price at that level. So this is one of the ways that we can get support and resistance. And you can see on some of my other charts, let me just pop some. See how here, what we did is we built, we can call it a zone. Okay, these are the two prices very close to each other and we colored it in and we call this a zone or support level as opposed to a support line. And these are the prices around here. And look how well this triangle developed right between the support and resistance levels. You'll see when you start putting these on your charts that they are very important because you should, what I do is I always have my support and resistance levels drawn on my charts. And the first thing in the morning, when I start waking up and looking at charts, that's the first thing I look at is what are the support and resistance levels around the current price? Which, which prices are, will be important? Because if you're looking to buy, you would look for price to bounce off of that support level for you to enter the market. If you were looking to where to exit the market and you were looking for your target, you would surely take a look at it based on where the next resistance line is. Okay. Here we can see all of this beautiful interpretation. Now we've got price moving in a triangle right below the resistance level. When it broke out of the triangle, it also broke that resistance and our targets are also based. So we set our target for a triangle and we're not talking about triangle trading tonight, but we use the width of the triangle to set our target level. When we got a breakout, which would have been here, okay, we would firstly look at and make sure we don't have a resistance level before this target, because we do, we might have a problem achieving that target. So it helps us define the markets as we see them. So support and resistance is common jargon for areas on a chart where price has a difficult time breaking through. Support levels tend to stop price from falling below a specific point and resistance levels act like a price ceiling that price cannot break above. Knowing where these levels are make it much easier to decide when to open and close trades. So the other way we can get this for short term is looking at the most recent swing highs and swing lows on your candlesticks and taking those swing highs and swing lows and drawing them forward to give us some price on our chart. So as price moves up and down, each level that price has bounced off of could be a level in the future that price bounces off of again. This is a manually intensive method. It takes time to draw on all the assets you're waiting for, but it can pay off in the long run. Then we have something called pivot points. 
Pivot points also help us look at our charts and find levels of support and resistance. Pivot points come from what's called a pivot point calculator. A pivot point calculator is a mathematical or it's a mathematical equation that uses the open, the high, the low, and the close to calculate the levels of support and resistance. And we can take these prices and we get the three levels of support below and the three levels of resistance above, and we can plot these on our price charts. So that's another way to get these, but these are mathematical calculations. So they're therefore not as valuable or as accurate as eyeballing them yourself. Now, remember the market ebbs and flows. It moves up and then it comes down. It goes up and it comes down. And the primary ways we make sense out of this movement is by knowing these support and resistance levels. For price action traders, support and resistance levels help us plan our stop loss placement and our profit targets. But perhaps more importantly, these levels give us a way to make sense of the market in terms of what it has done, what it is doing, and what it might do next. So let's talk about what we call dynamic support and resistance. And what I mean by dynamic is these are moving levels. In other words, we can get these from moving averages. A moving average moves up and down according to what price is doing, and you can set it to consider a certain number of bars or time periods. When you set the support and resistance, I mean, sorry, when you set the moving average, you can use it as a support and resistance level. So in other words, if price is trading over top of the moving average, it's forming a support level underneath price. If it's trading below that moving average, it's making a resistance level. And we can watch for price to test the moving average after breaking above it or below it. So as you see on this chart, we have a 50 period moving average on the chart. And you can see that every time price moves up towards it, it breaks through and falls back down. When it breaks above it, it's broken its resistance level. When it eases back down, it's easing back to its support level. Then we also have what we call retracement levels. These are levels of support and resistance. And we're not talking about Fibonacci. We have, uh, the markets assume that our retracement level, especially our 50% retracement level, is part of Fibonacci, but it isn't, it's part of Dow theory. And the markets tend to retrace 50% of their prior move. And by knowing this level on your chart, and it happens so often that price will bounce off that 50% move, that we can put this on our chart and use it as our support or resistance around the current price. So now that you know the basics, it's time to apply the basics, but extremely useful technical tools to your trading. We wanna make things easy to understand. So we've divided how to trade support and resistance to two simple areas, the bounce and the break. The bounce means the price bounces off of that support level and the break is it breaks through the resistance or the support level. So the bounce as the name suggests is one method of trading support and resistance levels and is right after the bounce. Many traders 
make the error of setting their orders directly on the support and resistance level and just waiting for their trade to materialize. Sure, this may work at times, but this is the kind of trading method assumes that support and resistance levels will hold without any price actually getting there yet. And we'll assume that that support resistance level is a, really a finite number. But you might be thinking, why don't I just set my entry order right on that line? Well, that way I am assured the best possible price. When playing the bounce, we might want to tilt the odds in our favor and find some sort of confirmation that the support or resistance level will hold. So what we would look for is because you're technically looking for price to come down to that support level and bounce off of it. Okay. And we need something to confirm we got that bounce and then set our entry point there. And then we could define our stop loss is somewhere slightly below that support level or we could use a swing low if it broke below the support level. So you need to be a little bit more cautious than simply placing an order to buy at the support level. So if you're looking to go short, you have the exact opposite because in with support and resistance, they are mirror images of each other. So in the perfect world, support and resistance levels would hold forever. McDonald's food would be healthy and we'd all be flying around with jetpacks. In a perfect Forex trading world, we, would, we could just jump in and out whenever price hit those major support and re resistance levels and earn ton loads of money. Well, the fact is that these levels break and break quite often. So it's not just enough to play the bounces. You should also know what to, to do however support and resistance levels give way. So the simplest way to play breakouts is to buy or sell whenever price passes convincingly through a support or resistance area. But the key word here is convincing because we only want to enter when price passes through a significant support and resistance level with ease. We want that support or resistance area to act as if it just received a karate chop. We want it to wilt over in pain as price breaks through it. So imagine a hypothetical situation. You've decided to go long the Euro US dollar, hoping it would rise after bouncing from a support level. Soon after the support breaks, you are now holding on to a losing position without your account balance fall, slowing, slowly falling? Do you accept the defeat and get the heck out and liquidate or do you hold on to your price and wait for it to rise again? Now, if you were conservative, you would just take your losses and get out of the market. But if you're a little bit more risky, you would do the other. Now we've gone over major support and resistance and how I use them as the indications of market conditions, levels to look for to buy or sell, levels to define risk as a framework to understand what the market has done, what it is doing and what it might do next. When you combine a solid understanding of support and resistance with price action and market trends, you have a triumphant of trading. Support and resistance doesn't just have, doesn't have to be confusing. We can mix and match all the methods above and create a healthy amount of price levels that we can trade. As always, practice makes perfect. So make sure to test out these methods before you, on yourself, on a real demo account before you start risking your money. But remember, support and resistance levels are areas and there is more, the more times that price has moved through those areas historically and touched it or held it, the more important that line is. And you can have major levels and minor levels, okay? And you should be aware of these. I color code them. My major levels will be in red and my minor levels will be in blue and I can have a third type of level in green. And as price is moving through them, when I see it coming through a green level, I don't expect a reaction, but I am, I'm prepared for it when I see it moving to a blue level, I, I do expect some type of reaction, but my main level is my red level because they're a level that has historically held and has been approached many times in the past and held. 
So keep that in mind when you're doing your support and resistance on your charts. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you for being part of ETX. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.